Good afternoon, everyone. These speakers, by the way, for the public is that is for recording only. So if you would like to hear better, there's a couple more seats in the front. We, I don't think we could yell. <laughs> so thank you for being here. <clears throat> okay. For each case, there will be a public hearing. We ask that the applicant keep their presentation to under 10 minutes. They may reserve two minutes as a rebuttal. We ask that the public keep their comments to two minutes unless they have previously requested in writing for five minutes as a representative of a group or organization. Pursuant to the provision of section 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, notice is hereby given that a final hearing before this commission is appealable to the Chancery Court of Davidson County or the Circuit Court of Davidson County, this a statutory writ of certiorari. You are advised to seek your own independent legal counsel to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements are met. You should also seek independent legal advice regarding the applicability of the writ of certiorari to the specific decision of the Historic Zoning Commission. Items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. Our first order of business is adoption of the agenda. Robin, are there any changes to today's agenda? Yes. Has been withdrawn, and yeah. 409 Broadway has made a request for deferral. Okay, 2020 10th Avenue South has been withdrawn, and 409 Broadway has deferred. Yes. Okay, so with those changes, is there a motion to adopt the agenda? I so move. There's a motion. There's a second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Are there any council members here? As none. Approval of the minutes of September 19, 2018. Are there any questions or is there a motion to approve? Okay. On, there's a typo on page four. On the paragraph just before the motion towards the end of the page, um, there should be a period after the word addition and that CON that shouldn't be there. So we've made that correction if, if you agree to that. Okay. There's a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Consent agenda. For Sean. Uh, the items on the consent agenda include at 1703 Forest Avenue. That's an application for new construction of an addition. Uh, 1112 1112 Chapel Avenue, new construction of a detached accessory dwelling unit. 104 Bowling Avenue, that's construction of an addition. Uh, staff recommends approval of the items on the consent agenda with the applicable conditions in the staff recommendations and finds that the applications meet the design guidelines for their respective overlays. Okay. Any other questions for Sean? All right. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? There's a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So passes. All right. So under violations and court actions is 422 Broadway. Floor 22 Broadway is better known as Tootsie's. The applicant is proposing a sign for the alley elevation. The sign size, materials, and illumination all meet the design guidelines. The signage is proposed to be installed below the window sills of the top floor, which meets the design guidelines. However, the design guidelines state that signage should not obscure architectural features, and the proposed sign is to be mounted on window casing. Staff recommends approval based on the fact that the windows are not historic and they are located on the rear of the building. In addition, any other, any other non-window locations will put the signage in inappropriate or unsafe locations. 
So staff is recommending approval of the signage, um, finding that it meets the de design guidelines for signage in the Broadway Historic Preservation Zoning overlay, with the exception of the placement. Staff recommends approval of the proposed placement since the windows the sign will cover are not historic and are located on the rear of the building. In addition, staff recommends approval because all other non-window locations would not meet the design guidelines for placement. Okay. Um, are there any questions for Melissa at the moment? Okay. Uh, is the applicant here? Yeah. Okay. Please come forward. Say your name and address, please. Oh, uh, there, please. My name is Steve Meisner. I represent Tootsie's Entertainment LLC. As you all know, this is the second time I've appeared before this particular commission regarding an ongoing civil dispute that is pending in the Sixth Circuit Court for Davidson County, Tennessee. This is the last piece of the dispute to be resolved. The action currently pending is a writ of certiorari regarding this commission's decision the last time we were here regarding the sign. Um, as some of you may know, because of the historical, that's a bad word, because of the history of the dispute that the uh, sign that was originally put on the back of Tootsie's, which is there now, um, did not, was not uh, reviewed by this commission before it was put up, which is the reason for the dispute. Uh, the location of the sign became an issue, uh, and the location of the sign, we believe, was originally approved by the commission. So we're here now to seek approval of a compromise design sign that has been brokered between staff uh, and the owners of Tootsie's Entertainment LLC uh, with respect to the sign that exists. The order that either has been proposed or has been discussed, certainly with Metro Council, uh, will resolve the dispute uh, and uh, all of the current actions will be dismissed uh, once we have approval from the commission regarding the sign. Do you all have any questions for me? Not at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. We're open for public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak on this project? Close public hearing. Commissioners, is there discussion? Madam Chairman, uh, with respect to, um, to 422 Broadway, uh, I move for approval based on staff recommendation and conditions. There is a motion. Second. There's a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? There are none opposed, so it passes. Thank you. All right, so the next item on the agenda is 1910 19th Avenue South. Um, this is a request to add onto an existing outbuilding and to convert it to a DADU. Um, the house located at 910 19th Avenue South is a one and a half story home that was built circa 1928 um, that contributes to the character of the Belmont Hillsboro neighborhood. Um, a photo of the house is shown here on the left and on the right is an aerial photo of the house that also shows the existing outbuilding, which is <coughs> identified by the, the blue arrow. So here are photos of the uh, front and right side of the existing outbuilding, um, which is single story and has a cross gabled roof form similar to the historic house. Um, the plan includes a rooftop addition and the addition of a covered stoop on the right side facade. Uh, the site plan includes an outline of a larger addition, which is shown here in red, um, to the footprint of the existing outbuilding, um, but that is not proposed with this application. Um, therefore, staff would recommend that the applicant submit a site plan uh, that accur accurately shows what is requested. Um, so here uh, is the left side elevation of the DADU, um, which shows the, the outbuilding in relation to the historic house. Um, the applicant proposes to add living area above the garage um, and the plan labels the proposed addition as a dormer. Um, however, because what is labeled here as a dormer does not project from the, the roof as you typically would see uh, with a dormer, but rather extends above the existing roof, um, staff reviewed the proposal as a new cross gabled roof form uh, for the existing outbuilding. So with the proposed rooftop addition, the overall height of the DADU will be taller than the existing house, which 
which does not meet the design guidelines. Um, in addition, the eave height will also exceed the maximum allowed by the design guidelines. Uh, so staff would recommend that the overall height of the addition be reduced so that it does not exceed the height of, of, the, of the existing house, um, which measured here is 20 feet from grade, and that the eave height not exceed 10 feet. Um, so with these conditions, the overall height as well as the eave height would meet the design guidelines. Um, the left side elevation of the existing house you see here, there's kind of a, a faint outline uh, showing a rear addition that's taller than the existing house. Uh, no plans have been submitted for any such addition, so they have, uh, staff has not reviewed that. Um, so here we have the, the front, um, rear, and uh, right side elevation of the DADU. Um, the proposed rooftop addition also does not meet the design guidelines for roof form. Uh, since it creates an asymmetrical cross gable that, that's not typical in the district and therefore does not meet section three, B, sorry, 2BI1. Um, some alternatives uh, available in, in this situation could be to add dormers that do meet the design guidelines um, or, to, um, or to create an addition that um, is uh, symmetrical cross gable with a continuous eave um, rather than having those two eave heights. Um, so staff recommends that the roof form be revised so that it is appropriate for the district. In conclusion, staff recommends approval um, with the following conditions. Uh, one, that the overall height of the DADU shall not exceed the height of the house and that the eave height shall not exceed 10 feet from grade. Two, the reform shall be appropriate for the district, and three, staff approve the final selections um, of the cladding, roofing, trim, windows, doors, porch roof, porch floor, porch posts, and porch base prior to purchase and installation. And with these conditions, um, the proposed DADU would meet the design guidelines for the Belmont Hillsboro uh, Neighborhood Conservation Zoning Overlay. All right. Thank you, Melissa. Right. Any questions for Melissa? All right. Okay. No, it was constructed in 2006. Um, I found the building permit, um, um, and and it appeared to meet everything when it was um, when it was permitted. So with the, the ten foot um, with the ten foot eave mm. requirement, um, essentially it'd be you'd be taking the roof off and creating some alternative. That, right. That's essentially the solution as I see it that we're talking about because those eave heights appear to be significantly more than 10 feet. Well, they, on the, the existing, ones. right. And then the existing outbuilding, the, the eave heights are fine. Um, it's when the uh, rooftop addition is added sure. and that's essentially adding two, two story mm -hmm. eaves. <laughs> um, so, I mean, one option would be just to not do that and add a dormer, mm -hmm. um, or as you say, to replace it with a cross gable form. Okay. Applicant, please. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Mitch Hodge. I'm the architect uh, for this, and uh, the owner's here, Joy Carr, as well. Um, your, your address, Mitch. Oh, I'm at 1900 uh, Cedar Lane, Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you there um, this this project is it's a bit of a hybrid they've they built this um, this modest two-car garage back in 2006 and now she's needing to add an apartment to she's her daughter's moving in there basically trying to move move her daughter in there and then it's also part of this we're going to be um, doing some adding a second floor addition on down the road for the um, for the main house um, the garage is what it is it's it's fairly modest footprint about 450 square feet um, we're trying to do this without having to tear the whole roof off but unfortunately the guidelines it's being reviewed as if we're building a new structure um, on this um, over the top of this garage what we're actually adding on is about 350 square feet which is very minimal to get a uh, to get a living space up there. We're getting the kitchen, living, dining, the bathroom, laundry, all that in there. The rest of the roof is basically, a, they're sleeping 
room. It's, it's only about eight feet at the peak, so it's almost like a tent. Again, we're going just in a very modest fashion. Um, the requirements that we're presented with as far as keeping the, um, the dormer two feet back, um, from there at some of the eave heights, it just, for this footprint, it just does not work for that. It's just the, the existing garage is too small for that. The reason I showed, if we could back up to the site plan, Oh, mm, good luck. Okay. Never use this, but Ah, here we go. The the reason I showed the the red outline is is that would be that is the garage that would be allowed if we were building a a new dadu. As you can see, it's significantly larger than the existing. They don't want to go that route. They want to keep the garage small. You know, that it's all they need. Um they're trying to do that. But what I'm showing is the the red area in the front that's we'd have to go that much deeper in order for these dormers for that living space to sit two feet within um, the existing ground floor walls through there um, and then regarding the eave heights uh, you know the existing garage has nine foot eaves um, I don't I'm not sure why they're not being addressed um, we're not tearing we're not taking that roof off at this with this design again we're taking a very minimal approach just taking the the right portion of that and adding some living space that's tall enough to accommodate um, these spaces. So um, the roof form, I've, it's not a copy of the house, but I feel it's compatible um, with the with the front house. It's, if you look at the front house, you know we'll be using similar windows and and that the existing garage that's there it kind of takes its cues off from there. But again, I don't think we're departing much from that. Um, I've, I've been working with them to, you know, come up with a solution. I tried the cross gable and when you, when you spring a roof line from all the way from side to side, it simply doesn't give you the headroom up there. Um, in addition, we would be tearing the whole roof off the structure, which I don't know if that's even a reality for them to go, to go that far into it. Um, so there's, there's several factors. Yes, if we were designing this from scratch, it's a no brainer. We can do all that. but. We're trying to work with what we have and, and having doing it with minimal impact to what the garage structure there. And um, I, f I feel like we've taken a fairly modest approach to this. Some of these structures, get, they get up, I mean, they're basically two-story houses. I think this is a modest addition. And um, I believe Joyce, they've talked to the neighbors, they, they support it. Um, so we just asked, I know it's, it's out of the limits of the, the dadu, but it's not, oh no, I've done something here. That's me. <laughs> there we go. But you know, we asked it be approved as it's designed. Oh, another thing, the ridge height, I know that it's taller than the, it's two feet taller than the existing house, but they, they hired me to do a, an addition on the back house to expand some second story space. Um, well, that's not it. So you'll see um, at the back of the house, what I'm showing is uh, just an outline. It's not even the actual design, but it's showing the, the height limit. We can go two feet above the existing ridge, and that's about where the new garage falls as well. So in meeting with them, they said they would take that addition in consideration in determining the height for the garage. Unfortunately, we're kind of a chicken and egg situation that they need to build the garage first to get the living space there in order to move them out of the upstairs and do that. So that will be added sometime after we get this garage going. But um, again, it's currently it's, it's taller, the garage is taller, but once we get the second, the back addition done, and it'll be, it'll be in compliance with it. Okay, um, is that good, Mitch? Uh, All right. If is, you have any questions, I'm here. Qu yes, yeah. please. Any questions for Mr. Hodge? Okay, not at the moment. Open public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak? Close public hearing. Commissioners? The owner's here if you have questions, but, she, but she's. But Did yeah. you want to? I just closed public hearing. So, okay. <laughs> Wait, but you, we would have, how many minutes do they have left on? Okay, but uh, that would be rebuttal to the public hearing, so. Okay, um, commissioners? Mm. 
What about that ridge height? You want to go there first? Yeah. I guess the asymmetrical um, elevation is where I'd like to defer. So it was mostly done um, for, because um, that was the only way they could get space in there. Was were options looked at that maybe the form is not asymmetrical, but the roof is, and I'm not sure if that's a better or not, but um, I know they're um, wanting to limit the amount of construction. Um, um, yeah. yeah, that's fine. Sure. I guess I should have asked you before you sat down. <laughs> Maybe stay close just in case, yeah. unless. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'll be here. Okay, the, um, as you can see on the right hand um, side there, that roof height is only about 16 feet tall. We're able to do it that low because the stairs come up there. So obviously, we don't need that headroom there. And we're basically springing from the other stairwell to get that. Now, the, um, on the left hand side, the, I guess the taller side of that dormer, that is living space. It's only about seven feet there, but we're able to work with that because right in the middle it's enough to get us some, some headroom. So um, basically it's asymmetrical in order to keep the roof height down to the actual living. Like I said, we don't need that much headroom over the stairs as you're going down. We can do without it. Yeah, I, and I guess I did follow that. I was just curious, was it looked at continuing the roof form down symmetrical? It, no, I don't, and I don't I know. I did. That it might... seemed odd because that dormers, it does, the other, the first was... floor dormers right there and it just seemed over the top yeah, right there. Was, and I'm not sure that would even qualify as a would yeah, that I even qualify as a cross gable if it if it just extended out it's not really I mean it still sits above yeah I know and what is we it can do how that, is it supported it, and all that kind of stuff yeah but. I mean it sits above that so it's that technically a cross gable or does it diverge away like this one does yeah well, it it does um, although by itself it has an architectural neatness to it but it would be kind of contradictory to you know the, the district to have that but uh, but anyway I, I wanted to ask a couple more questions okay. about that maybe don't go too far away just right, in case just <laughs> well you can sit down but uh, <laughs> just maybe don't go all the way back oh and uh, I'm not sure we can we can propose on uh, what might happen you know for the height, you know, I mean, I know that they're good intentions, but um, yeah. that anything can happen. Um, well, that's that's where I just see that rule as being somewhat contradictory to what I mean. These these overlays are about. It's forcing us to. I mean, they're initial. They initially hired me for this for both of these things. So it's not a it's not something we just threw in there once we found out that. Um, but it's. To me, it's saying that if you want to do a bigger structure there, you have to add a bigger house in order to do that. Um, they are planning on doing this second story, but their, their immediate needs are getting this living space because that's where the daughter's living now, so we can get her over there so we can start construction on the second part. Um, I was just showing the outline of that, showing that at that point, wherever that is, a year from now, we'll be in complete compliance for yeah. it. So there. So. Understood. Um, architects, any other comments? I do have a question for staff. Do we have any, do we have any precedent of approving, in essence, a, a, a greater ridge height based on what could happen, what may happen to no, the... I don't, I mean, we've had projects come in where there is an addition as well as an outbuilding at the same time, but um, not, not an ask like this, or we haven't reviewed an addition, so not sure if that height would be appropriate. Yeah, what, before, what we have before us is a DADU, and we need to go with those guidelines, and not something... Can the staff respond, or I guess speak to... Um, I think you did, but I, I just want some clarity on what, if this were a clean slate and, and you were coming, would be, the guidelines would still be the same and that sort of the max buildable area would be what it is. 
Right. Can you speak to the lower portion being able to be larger? Yeah, sure. To accommodate more on the second floor, which is that's what right. the desire is here. That's kind of the end of the day. That's what right. we're, we're talking about. Um, so as Mitch said, the the footprint, the existing footprint of the um, outbuilding, it's it's pretty modest. Um, this lot is over ten thousand square feet. So they could go up to a thousand square foot footprint. Um, I think with that covered um, the covered stoop, it brings the footprint up to about 660 square feet. Um, so they could, they definitely could enlarge it. However, they would run into the problem once the, the footprint goes over 700 square feet, which they're fairly close. That left side setback um, goes from three to five feet. Currently, it's it's sitting at the minimum setback line of three feet. So, if they were to increase it, say another 40 square feet, they would also come to you with a setback determination, which um, I, I don't think the commission's approved a lot of those for DADUs um, that I can remember. So, although I think that we have, in some circumstances, mm -hmm. approved setback variances, yes, and, and especially when you're dealing with either existing. Uh, footprints mm -hmm. that kind of stuff yes okay. uh, you know I, I guess my thinking is that um, you know I think I, th I think the architects done an admirable job of trying to work within the parameters but but clearly one of the hardships that we don't consider and can't consider is what's the easiest way to build something and, and so uh, to, to me really the difficulty with this is the footprint of the structure and and my sense is that um, it, it, this does violate several precepts and does come across, uh, I think, one of the words was, you know, basically it comes across as a two-story mini house in the back, and uh, which is contrary to what our guidelines are. So, so I, I can't see supporting this other than with the conditions that the staff has, has put in, in their recommendation. Okay. Anyone else? No. Nope. Make a motion. Um, sure. W with respect to this project, I move for uh, approval based on the recommendations and conditions uh, in the staff report. Okay. There is a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. There's a second. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? All right. None opposed. The recommendation passes. Thank you. Fourteen oh six Fifth Avenue North. So before I begin, I wanted to point out that you did receive public comment on this project this morning. I believe it was emailed to you and then also you should have a printout in front of you. According to the design guidelines, 1406 Fifth Avenue North, uh, I'm sorry, according to the uh, Germantown Historic District National Register report, uh, 1406 Fifth Avenue North was constructed circa 1850 and is a one-story brick raised cottage with daylight basement. However, the structure could date back as early as the 1830s, making it one of the earliest homes in Germantown. The applicant is proposing a rear addition that is eight feet, four inches taller than the historic house and a front porch addition. The Historic Zoning Commission approved this same addition in 2015 and then later in 2016 under the old design guidelines for Germantown. The project was never constructed. So they are returning, basically the applicant is returning with the same drawings as the commission approved in 2015 and 2016, which I'll explain in a minute, um, but, but we need to relook at it under the current design guidelines since the design guidelines changed in 2017. Here is the site plan. The site plan shows a daddy at the, at the rear. Um, it was originally approved in 2016 and in February 2018, um, MHCC reissued the permit for the DADU, finding that the DADU's design, location, materials, etc., met uh, the current design guidelines and also the DADU ordinance. So we're not looking at the DADU today. Um, just giving you a little bit of history, um, the main portion of the addition, which is the portion that is taller than the house, was approved in 2015, and then a year later they came back with an additional side addition and a front of porch addition, which the commission approved in 2016. Just a little bit of a history of the site. So I'm first going to discuss uh, the proposed front porch. The existing partial width front porch was constructed in 20, or sorry, 2008 and is therefore not historic. The 1897 Sanborn map, which is the one on the top left, 
Um, it depicts the house as having a small stoop or porch towards the right side of the front facade, similar to what was constructed in 2008. However, the 1914 Sanborn map shows the house as having a full width front porch. A photograph of the house from the 1970s shows a full width front porch. This is likely the same porch that appears in the 1914 um, Sanborn map, although it's impossible to know if the porch had changed or you know, what the reform really looked like at that point. The applicant proposes to construct a full width front porch with a footprint matching that of the porch shown on the 1914 map. Although the house did not originally have a full width front porch, it did have one added that remained long enough to has, have historical significance of its own. So we thought, found that even though originally it had a stoop, there was a period of significance where there was a full width front porch, and so putting back a full width front porch would be appropriate in this case. Staff finds that because the porch depicted in the circa 1970 photograph may not be exactly the original design, staff found that a similar configuration is appropriate. The differences in the photograph and in what the design is proposed now are minimal. They include a hipped roof rather than a shed roof and slightly different pier configurations, but still with an open basement level. The porch will have a depth of five feet. Typically, uh, staff asks for a minimum of six feet for depth, but given that you can see in the Sanborn map, it looks like it was a very narrow front porch, um, and the evidence showed that a five foot front porch uh, was what was there historically, so therefore it's appropriate. So staff is recommending approval of the new full width front porch as designed. Um, there is some partial demolition proposed. Uh, there, um, there's a part of the structure at the back you can see on the floor plan here, the dotted line. That's the portion that's going to be removed. Most, most of that is siding, um, and we're not sure the date of construction of that addition. I think it actually does appear in the 18, 7, 1897 map, but it's hard to tell. In any case, staff went out and inspected it and determined that it didn't really contribute to the historic character of, of the um, of the uh, of the house. And you know, even if it was in some form part of the original structure, it's, there's been a lot of alterations, and staff found it appropriate to demolish this portion of the house. So now on to the rear addition. Again, the commission approved the rear addition that is eight feet four inches taller than the historic house in 2015. Um, at that time, staff had actually recommended that the addition be no taller than five feet, but the commission did approve the eight foot four inch um, additional height. Um, so the permit that was issued in 2015 has since expired. Just so you're aware, our permits are generally valid for a year. Um, and after that, they have to return to us to either renew the permit or relook at it. Uh, and again, just a reminder that in 2017, the commission adopted new design guidelines for Germantown. So we have to re-examine this design under the new design guidelines. Uh, so again, the applicant is uh, proposing a rear addition that is eight feet, four inches taller than the historic house. It is inset two feet from each of the sidewalls, which is appropriate. Examining the proposed additions under the current design guidelines for Germantown, staff finds that it's inset width, depth, and footprint all meet the design guidelines. However, staff finds that the height of the addition does not meet the, the current design guidelines. The previous Germantown design guidelines did not discuss um, situations where additions could go taller than the historic house. It just didn't mention additions being taller or wider at all. Um, and they didn't really say when it would be appropriate, what parameters there would be if an addition were to be taller. It just didn't mention that at all. Many of the other MHC design guidelines for residential conservation and historic preservation zoning overlays however state in italicized print that an addition may extend to, extend to be up to four feet taller than the historic house at a distance 40 feet back from the front. So that's what's typically we say you can be up to four feet taller if you're more than 40 feet back from the front. Um, in 2015 when staff looked at this and saw that the design guidelines for Germantown didn't really mention anything about when and when and how an addition could be taller. We determined at that point that since it's 50, foot back, 50 feet back from the front of the house, that five feet taller would be appropriate. But then again, the commission determined that the eight foot four inches was appropriate. Um, fast forward to now, to 20, you know, post-2017, the current design guidelines. The current design guidelines do now specify in the italicized print that additions can be up to four feet taller than the historic house at a point, point 40 feet back from the front of the house. Um, so staff finds that the addition that is eight foot four inches taller than the 
current uh, than the um, existing house is not appropriate under the current design guidelines, which again specify that taller additions are limited to four feet taller. Um, staff, in this case, staff does find that an addition that is taller could be appropriate in this location because of the site. Um, you can see here in the side elevations that the site slopes pretty significantly from the front to the back, um, making it, and, there's, and also we've been told that the site is rock, so it's very difficult and expensive to kind of dig out and kind of make an even floor line and, and, um, and, and build on the lot. So um, I think that's one of the reasons why the applicant is asking for additional height. But then again, staff finds that the, the height of eight feet four inches does not meet the design guidelines and that the addition should be re reduced to be um, just four feet taller, so it needs to be reduced by four feet four inches. Um, so the design guidelines for Germantown also state that primary facades should be at least 80% brick. Um, it does stipulate that there could be a lesser amount of brick, a lesser percentage of brick on facades that are um, like non-primary facades, side facades. Uh, in this case, you can see the top, uh, the left facade is 52% brick and the right facade is 47% brick. Uh, so staff, in deter determining whether or not the um, addition, which is all siding, none of it's brick, um, whether or not that met the intent of the design guidelines to have a facade that was you know, primarily brick. Um, we looked at the historic maps, which show that um, you can see the 1897 map and then again the 1957 map. And if you're not familiar with these maps, the way they're colored is the pink means that it's brick or mace brick generally, and the yellow on the top means that it's wood uh, or some sort of frame material. Um, for 57, again, the pink means brick, and then the non-colored areas would imply that it's, that it's a wood material. So looking at kind of what the historic conditions were of the house, um, it sh shows that there was a significant amount of additions or parts of the house that weren't brick, um, and therefore staff concluded that what the, what the applicant is proposing in terms of the percentage of brick is appropriate. And here are some renderings which the applicant has uh, given to us. These were not in your um, in your packets. Uh, they just gave them to me yesterday, but it shows the des the design as proposed. So, in conclusion, staff is recommending approval with the following conditions: that the addition be no taller than four feet taller than the historic house. Staff approve a brick sample and roof shingle sample. Staff approve the location of HVAC, HVAC and all of the utilities. And um, since this is a preservation overlay, not a conservation overlay, staff will want to approve all permanent landscape features included but not limited to fences, pathways, pavers, parking pads, pools, etc. With these conditions, staff finds that the proposed demolition and additions meet sections two, three, five, and seven of the Germantown design guidelines. I know this is kind of a complicated project, so, <laughs> um, so I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, Otherwise, I'll turn it over to the applicant. Any questions right now? I think basically it's a four feet difference than what we're Yeah, I think the main sticking, the, the main kind of takeaway is staff is okay with the project except for the height, which is not a small thing. Which um, is different though than originally under, when we approved it last time, it was approved. Right. So yeah, so the commission has previously approved basically the same design in two separate reiterations, but, um, but staff looking at the new design guidelines or the current design guidelines um, finds that it doesn't meet those because of the height. Okay. It, and the permit expired. So yes, yes. We're reviewing it like it's new. Right, right. With a quick question, with a four, four, almost five foot reduction in the overall height in the rear, I don't know you can only review what you see, but is that roof form sort of start to get into a I'm pitch not, that's undesirable? Uh, I don't know if I can answer that question in terms of, let me see if I can go with the, the head heights are for. I guess it's a question to determine, can you get a, can you get a two story addition on the one story right. with basement house? Right. That's, and I, think that's, this, that's I guess where I'm getting in to. In many, you know, in other cases, we would staff would typically recommend that you perhaps you dig out and mm -hmm. drop the floor level, but I think that's hard. I don't know if it's impossible to do. It's probably expensive in this case. Uh, but yes, I'm not sure if you'd be able to get a second level up there if you were going to drop it to four feet. Okay. By four feet, four feet, four inches. Okay. Anything else? All right. Is the applicant here? Okay.
Mike Rutland uh, with Root Arc, um, standing in for for John today. Um, address, please. Address, please. Address, 753 Alloway Street. Um, as she had said, you know, y'all have seen this. It's been a couple of years, and um, and really, we haven't really changed in our in what we're asking for, and we are comfortable with staff, staff recommendation and anything, and, and you had or just said that too, except for this height issue. Um, we feel that with the, we added these perspectives in this last week um, to really show that, you know, it's not, it's not visible um, from uh, th that, that other perspective was across the street in both directions. Um, and I think John, um, in, in a previous um, meeting also sort of accentuated how large these houses are uh, next to this, uh, you know, rather small uh, historic house that we're, we're trying to build behind. And then the other uh, large issue is, um, I think Melissa was saying, the, the 40 foot uh, rule off that, um, that we're actually, that, that eight foot four point is 60 feet back. Um, so not only are we blocked by these two houses, um, but we are, are pretty far back there to where you can't see um, pretty much at all. So uh, aside from the hardship of the slope and the exposed bedrock, um, we feel strongly that uh, it, it would be very difficult, almost impossible to do that second floor addition without that added added height Any, anything okay anything else um, any commission commissioners you have any other questions for the moment all right uh, we'll open a public hearing first um, anyone here to speak on behalf of this project Lane, 13086 Avenue. Uh, I'm a member of the um, Historic Germantown Board and also the chair of the Development Committee. And um, the board and the committee uh, supports the staff recommendation to only allow the four foot additional height over the historic building. Uh, the neighborhood worked hard to revise the guidelines because we saw how the uh, construction under the previous guidelines were changing the neighborhood. And so we worked hard to get these revised to try to address uh, situations and requests like this. And whereas I agree that street level, because of the slope of the lot, that you will not be able to see the addition, what you have to also take into account is Taylor Street comes down almost directly in front of these two houses and that is a slope down so when you're walking down the sidewalk of taylor street you will easily in my opinion will be able to see uh, that eight foot height of the addition over the historic house and uh, we want to start taking into account all public facades not just the public facade on the sidewalk in front of the house but other public facades on other uh, sidewalks in the neighborhood that you can see some of these additions and new construction. So we ask that the commission uh, adhere to the new revised guidelines and support the staff recommendation for the addition to be no more than uh, four feet taller than the historic house. Thank you. Anyone else? Close public hearing. Commissioner's discussion. Well, he, did he have a rebuttal or? Oh, you're good? Okay. No. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Always reminded. <laughs> um, I mean, I'll start. Well, I understand that, you know, Germantown is a mix, um, you know, and, and it is between these two very large homes. I mean, the home that this is, will be attached to is a small, very historic one-story with exposed basement home 
So in that immediate vicinity, that's the addition. And you know, it's just you putting a big two-story um, in the back. And um, I just, I agree with staff. Okay. Anyone else? Oh, I don't disagree with our previous deliberations um, on this project, but our previous deliberations aren't as relevant given that the guidelines have, have now moved. Um, I, I, I don't see this necessarily as an egregious thing uh, to do, and, and I think I'm, I'm recalling some of the discussion on it, but I think given given the changes that um, they specifically address this condition, so it would be hard to support that uh, a change in the staff's recommendation. Mm -hmm. I'll make a mo motion to approve the staff. Oh, gentlemen. I would request a deferral at that point. Applicant is asking for a deferral. Okay. Robin. <laughs> yeah. It's up to you. Okay. Uh, commissioners, are, are you in agreement? <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. sure. It's like All right. We will <laughs> accept the, the request for deferral. All right. Hopefully you can continue to work with staff and yeah, you we, we have the yes. utmost. <laughs> the utmost. Yes, thank you. Yes. You all have already begun oh. reviewing it'll have it'll take a formal action okay. of the board to defer. So there'll need to be a motion all right. by a member and a second and you'll have to vote on it. All right. So So, so Madam Chairman, uh, I move that with respect to this project uh, that we accept the applicant's request for deferral. There's a motion? Second. Second. All in favor for the deferral. Aye. Aye. All right. We now approve the deferral. <laughs> Thank you. It's a beautiful property. Right. Yeah. Okay. That is correct. Uh, 1321A Stratford Avenue. This is a request to construct a new single family residence. Um, at 1321A Stratford <laughs> Avenue. The lot's currently vacant. Um, there was previously a house on the lot. It was constructed around 2013 and was not contributing, um, but that house has since burned down. Uh, the plan before you meets the design guidelines for height, scale, setbacks, and rhythm of spacing, materials, roof shape, and orientation. As proposed, the infill is oriented to Stratford Avenue with parking from an existing shared driveway. Uh, staff recommends that a walkway connecting the front porch of the infill to the public street be included on the site plan. Uh, the structure is one and a half stories uh, and will have a maximum height of 26 feet um, as measured from grade at the front. The overall height and scale of the infill are compatible with historic houses on this block of Stratford Avenue. Um, and so here are the front and rear elevations and the right and left side elevations. And here's some context photos of nearby historic homes. The photo on the left is 1317 Stratford, which is two doors down to the left. Um, the photo on the right is um, the house next door to the left, which is, which is a historic house as well. Um, and then the photo on the left here is directly across the street from the site, it's 1320 Stratford. And the photo on the right is 1327 Stratford, which is um, located to the right of the, the subject property about three houses down. So in conclusion, staff recommends approval of the project with the following conditions. Uh, one, the finished floor height shall be consistent with the finished floor heights of the adjacent historic houses to be verified by MHCC staff in the field. Two, the front setback should be consistent with the buildings to either side to be verified by MHCC staff in the field. Three, staff approve the final details of the roof color, siding reveal, windows, doors, trim, porches, porch floors and steps porch railings, porch posts, and walkway materials, and four, um, that the site plan shall include a sidewalk connecting the front porch of the infill to the public street. So with these conditions, uh, staff finds that the project can meet section three of the Inglewood Place Neighborhood Conservation Zoning Overlay Design Guide Guidelines. Thank you, Melissa. No problem. Any questions? Okay, we will hold question applicant. You're, you're welcome to come up and speak. <laughs> Just. Uh, 
give us your. I really don't have much to say if it's approved. I'm just, my name is Mitch Hodge at 1900 Cedar Lane, and um, I'm here if you have any questions. Do you, do you fought, are you in agreement with the staff recommendation? Yes, we went through several iterations through this and had made some modifications, and we fall within that. So great. Yeah. Good to hear. Okay. Good to hear. Oh, sure. So, so on the front porch, actually, it's on the back porch too, but on the front porch, and I think the house really fits into the neighborhood, fits into the to the context. There's a really big huge column on the corner that then sort of wraps over the top of the mm -hmm. porch. Was there, was there an inspiration for that or any uh, reference? That I just wanted to do something like a, a more massive column rather than just seeing these little eight inch columns. I don't think they're appropriate. It's, it's not a battered column, but it's more of a interpretation of just a stronger column proportionally. Yeah. Okay. All right, open public hearing. Close public hearing. Any discussion or motion? Make a motion to approve staff recommendation. There is a motion. Is there second. a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 None. Opposed? So the recommendation passes. Okay, our next item is 1623 Sumner. The current house is a circa 1948 house that staff has determined does not contribute to the historic character of the conservation zoning overlay in Eastwood. Uh, in October 2018, MHDC staff issued an administrative permit for the demolition of the current house. The applicant is proposing a duplex infill. infill. Here is the site plan. Uh, the house to the right, you don't really see in the site plan, but on the top, um, that house actually faces Setliff and does not face Sumner. Um, so staff is asking that the front setback of um, the infill line up with the front setback to the house to the to the left or to the lower area here at 1621 Sumner. Um, that footprint or the footprint of 1621 Sumner is not shown here, so we don't really know how this relates to um, to that. But staff is going to recommend that um, the two front setbacks line up. Uh, other than that, the proposed infill meets all of the base zoning setbacks. Melissa, yes. while you're looking at that, you do have a picture in our um, in our packet. So which one are you saying to, for it to line up on? Uh, I have, see, so oh, sorry, I'll, the spoiling the, uh, <laughs> um, the so it's the stone the house right here on the bottom picture. Okay. So the one, the top picture is the house to the right of the site, with that faces set lift. So that doesn't really provide much context because that's not facing Sumner, okay. um, the house at 1621 Sumner on the bottom is what okay. we want the front set back to line Just up for with. clarity. Thank mm -hmm. you. Here's the front facade. The proposed infill is one and a half stories with a ridge height of 23 feet, nine inches above the foundation. The foundation drawn on the plans is, is drawn on the plans as being approximately two feet. Uh, staff is going to recommend, as we always do, that uh, we inspect the foundation height and the first floor framing height just to make sure that um, it is appropriate to the historic context. Staff finds that the proposed height of the infill meets the historic context where historic houses are one to one and a half stories in height and range in height from 18 to 24 feet. The infill will be 31 feet 3 inches wide at the front. Uh, you can kind of see here in the footprint that it expands um, to 36 feet wide, approximately 15 feet back from the front porch. Staff finds that this meets the historic context where houses range in width from 28 to 34 feet at the front. The expanded width is pushed back, helping keep the scale of the infill appropriate to the context. Um, staff is recommending on the front facade and then again on the side facades that all paired window openings have a four to six inch mullion between them. And we're also recommending that the doors be at least half glass, the front doors. Here is the side elevation. Um, just note that the side elevations are um, mirror images of each other. So I'm just showing the left elevation, but the right el elevation is a mirror image of this. Um, on the side facade, staff finds that more window openings are required to meet the design guidelines. In particular, in the gable field, we suggest that either a mirror image of a window be added or just one central window be located in the gable field. Um, in addition, we'll want some windows in the back half of the house and also in the dormer fields. 
Um, so again, here's some context photos. A photo at the top is the house to the right that faces Setliff. Um, the house on the bottom is the house next door facing Sumner. Um, top is houses across the street. And the bottom are more houses on the same size of, as the infill further down. So in conclusion, staff is recommending approval with these conditions um, that staff verify the finished floor height and foundation height in the field, that the front setback lineup of the front setback of the house at 1621 Sumner, again, we'll want to verify that in the field, uh, the siding be smooth with a maximum reveal of five inches, the front door be at least half glass, staff approve the shingle and metal roofing color and textures, the HVAC be located on the side facade in the back half or on the back on the rear facade. Uh, one or two walkways be added from the street to the front porch. Uh, all paired window openings have a four to six inch mullion and additional windows be added on the side facade, specifically in the gable fields, on the ground floor behind the set side entries and in the side facade doors. With these conditions, staff finds the proposed infill meets section three, or sorry, section two B of the Eastwood Neighborhood Conservation Zoning Overlay Design Guidelines. Happy to answer any questions or turn it over to the applicant. The front elevation and the side elevation don't match. This shows the porch wrapping around and the site plan had so was a little unclear. I just want to make that's sure. That's because the, the you know, if you look at the site plan, um, I think it should be wrapping around the side. Maybe it's not showing on the site plan. Um, I thought the, yeah, you're right, it's not showing it. It looked like at yeah. one time it may have, but I, I, well, the way it's dimensioned, it, it was a curiosity that. Yeah, I didn't catch that, that it. Uh, and I don't, one, one, the front certainly doesn't wrap around, but the side. Right. And I'm not sure if, because I think that that's just like 18 inches or maybe two feet, so I'm not sure if it would make sense physically to have that much of a porch wrap around. Just curious. So. Yeah. Maybe the applicant can clear it up. Okay. Do we need to clarify that? Okay. Um, is the applicant here? Okay. My name's Kevin Kane with the MC2 group at 290 Hidden Lake Road in Hendersonville, Tennessee. And um, I don't have a whole lot to add um, in terms of the uh, front elevation question. I believe that what it was was um, with, with this dimension, uh, you can kind of see how the, the front, uh, those posts are kind of hiding the corner on that. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got 31 feet side to side. And so that roof, that metal roof on the porch will wrap around the sides a bit. Correct. Okay. It will return uh, back to those gotcha. kind of wings. So there. it does match. I'm just wasn't reading it right. right. The perspective is a little bit skewed there. Sure. Um, okay. We're comfortable with the staff uh, recommended conditions, um, and so I'll kind of wait and see if you have any questions. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, open public hearing. Anyone here for this project? Close public hearing. A discussion or. Questions or a motion? Uh, Madam Chairman, with respect to this project, I recommend for approval with staff recommendations with the one exception that, uh, that, that we've made before in similar circumstances, given that this is not a Victorian home and does have some arts and crafts elements that uh, the staff recommendation be modified to allow for a third glass door versus a half glass door uh, to reflect that style. Okay, there is a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor of the Really motion. quick just oh. discussion. Um, so the porch does wrap back there that little bit. Is that what you're saying? I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. So in no, plan. The roof, not the porch. The, the, roof. the roof, but not the porch. Okay. Correct. I, I couldn't hear that, so I'm sorry. Yeah, good, good question. Um, there's a first, there's a motion, there's a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? None opposed. So the recommendation passes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Robin, is there any other business? Yes, I do have just a couple of things. I wanted to remind you about the, the fact that we need to get up to date on all the training for this year. So um, if you haven't already responded about the online training, if you would let me know whether or not you've taken that. And um, our meeting date next month will be a little early to avoid the Thanksgiving holidays. So it'll be November 19th. We'll be back at Sunny West. Um, 2 p.m., but a new date. It'll be a Monday, not a Wednesday. 
and that moves our deadline up to November 2nd at noon. Also, I wanted to remind you that our old house fair is scheduled for March 2nd, 2019. I know that's a little ways off, but I wanted to let you know if you have any suggestions on who should be an exhibitor, who should be a sponsor, uh, craftsmen, contractors, specialists in masonry, metal, plaster work, landscaping, you know, anything having to do with, with old homes, be sure to shoot them to me, and if you have a contact name, that would be great. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, commissioners, for your time. Thank you, staff, and we are adjourned. <laughs>